robot. So. Look at this, look at this. Um, yeah, mm. that's a his cool name one. in the script is uh, Pothead. So. Pot- <laughs> <laughs> Pothead from Cowboy Bebop. Okay, I didn't know about that. <laughs> I also know the exact character you're talking about. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah. Hello, and welcome back to another another episode, another interview with the California Conventions blog. Uh, this time we're with uh, Bryce, Bryce Pappenbrook. Welcome. Hey there. Um, I'm Matthew. Next to me is Levi and Nate. Hey. Uh, so guys. we're going to get started um, with Sword Art Online. Sure. Because uh, we are in the middle of the 10th anniversary celebration. Yeah. Uh, looking back at when you were first cast as Kirito for the original SAO, how does it feel to have this amount of longevity with a, with a singular character? Uh, that you know within a franchise that has skyrocketed in popularity within the last decade. It's pretty incredible. Um, you know, when you start a show, you have no idea how long that show is going to last. You have no idea how long you're going to play that character. And when we saw the date that uh, the headset was released and they got stuck inside that original game, we saw the year 2022. Um, you know, the first thing we said was, wow, it's so far in the future, and <laughs> here we are. Yeah. And w- what I think was so clever is that after all of these years, Progressive was released, and we get to go back into Aincrad and see it from Asuna's perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was just an incredible decision to do that and to create those films. So the first one was just such an incredible movie. Sheremy, who plays Asuna, oh, yeah. continues to blow me away with how... Uh, amazing her acting is uh, I was able to go and watch it in the theater and I was literally texting her as I was in there like I can't believe how good you sound mm. um, so yeah I mean Kirito is such a special character um, for me and yeah to play him for over a decade is amazing we're gonna get back to that 2022 comment you made in just a moment uh, but first uh, we all know that he has gained quite a following quote unquote when it comes to the female characters throughout the franchise <laughs> yeah oh. if you had to pick one person for him to be with for the rest of his life who would it be and why wow i mean you know actually i've been asked this question on a panel with a bunch of the other actresses <laughs> and they all stare daggers oh at God. me i'm like how could you guys do this to me um that's what they <laughs> but but in all reality, like my connection to Kirito is Asuna, and the lines that I deliver to Asuna are um, like the closest connection I have to the character is me talking to my wife, um, who I've been with since high school. Um, that's that's the closest I can feel to how Kirito feels to Asuna. So I hope when I deliver those lines, they feel authentic and, and real, and I think that even though they were inside this virtual world, the love that they found was very real. And I find that uh, you know, really poetic and beautiful. Mm. So as you are, we are aware, we are actually in the month, in the year that SAO is supposed to release alongside the Nerf Gear. Yes. yes. So we had, a, we had a question that says, if you would play the game, on, would you play the game on day one? But then we just talked to Sharmi maybe about an hour ago. Yeah. And she said that you probably would be even a, like a beta tester. <laughs> You know, I mean, beta tester, would I actually die if I die in the game? <laughs> I mean, I'd be one of the first to die. I'd die before they told me that I was going to die in the game. And that happened to a lot of players. I'd be one of those oh my God. Okay, so you, you're definitely beta testing. You're definitely dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you actually lasted long enough. It's short of the chair. So like, that oh. just means he just added himself as being terrible at RPGs. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Not that I can't eventually complete them but I've died a lot along the way. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, we'll make it to the end. Oh, we've, yeah. we've enjoyed the journey uh, with many deaths. I have many lives? Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I use save points very quickly. Oh my god. That's way to do that Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. So uh, when it comes to Inosuke from Demon Slayer, yeah. uh, he is very different from the other Slayers. Um, as his character was raised in the wild by boars. So uh, how did that backstory uh, change your approach to how you voiced the character? Well, I tried to bring that like feral nature to him. I tried to give him a lot of energy, and he's also pretty angry a lot of the time. You know, that like kind of ferocity comes through. So what I used to kind of 
connect with Inosuke and where I found the voice actually is from coffee. Mm. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, dark, disgusting coffee. Oh, like yeah. black tar in a cup. Yeah, yeah. Right? The kind that's so bitter it makes oh. you angry. Oh, yes. So in between every take, I actually have this uh, just cup of death with me. I take a sip and I'm just like, <laughs> and that's Inosuke. <laughs> Yeah, it works wonders. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, as a follow-up, uh, were you also as shocked as many of the fans were to find out how pretty Inosuke is? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I was I was yeah. very curious why they cast me, and then I saw that moment. I'm like, now I know why. Now it is. <laughs> Actually, it was the two swords. That's what that's what <laughs> I'm thinking of the sword we want to see. <laughs> okay, so you were the ordinary cell that uh, sells a work franchise. Uh, or, I, ordinary cell? Yes, I was, and sells at work. Yes. Yeah. So are you surprised that the show is accurate and relevant to today's climate? Uh, what do you mean? So like, so how, how relevant the information is about you know the fact that a lot of people are learning about the human body through this anime series, where it's like a lot of times like prior hand, like you have to go to like biology class, you have to go to like textbooks. <laughs> I thought it was really clever to make a show like that, just like bringing all of those different cells to life. I thought that was awesome. I also didn't think that I would be such a big part of the show because he just shows up in an OVA after season one. And then uh, I got a message like, oh, not only are you back, but you have a bunch of lines and you're going to be singing the opening song oh. in season two. <laughs> so I was part of the ensemble singing the song and that was my first time being in an opening theme song oh, for a show. Wow. wow. Nice. Um, yeah, I thought it was really, really fun to be Thank able you. to do that. That is awesome. Yeah. Music artist Bryce Bath and <laughs> There it is. <laughs> All right, so in the hit anime series, Attack on Titan. Your voice is the very famous protagonist, Aaron Yeager. Yeah. So from his humble beginnings to himself being a Titan to what the heck is dealing with the final season right now. Yeah. Um, how has voicing Aaron been knowing how he has such turbulent characteristics? Yeah, it's been incredible. Definitely a ride. I knew what I was getting into because I was mm. a fan of the show before I oh, was nice. able to audition for it. Oh. Um, and it just absolutely pulled me in. Um, the story just has all these twists and turns and mm. I never guessed them right. Um, <laughs> I actually don't know the ending. Um, oh. I haven't read the manga. I haven't mm. been spoiled. The first time I'll get the script and say the lines for this final season will be right there in the moment. Mm. So for Aaron, yeah. I, I really want to feel what he's feeling mm -hmm. as I'm recording. So like season one, he bites his hand. I bit my hand in. so hard I left bruises. Mm. Um, season two, he's like more unhinged than ever before. I yeah. literally unhinged my jaw in the booth. Because I want that pain to come through. So you actually Aaron. do whatever Aaron does in script to say? As much as I can, or something that connects me with him in that moment. So, yeah, this latest season, I've done some of the craziest things I've Ooh. ever done in the booth. And uh, I'll share them after we're done with the show. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I have a feeling like the company would be like, please never do that again. <laughs> I don't want them to tell me that. So I'm just going to wait until I'm done. And then it's like, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, there you go. First half extremist. Well, I mean, I, I, I wasn't formally trained as, a, as an actor. I, mm. I actually went to UCLA, studied political science and philosophy. Mm. Um, so the way that I learned was in the moment and and by feeling what my characters feel so that um that approach is just how i how i do it nice. so yeah i think and every, I, I voice, get as close I think every to voice actor has their own ways of like, trying to portray the same character that they're you know voicing you know exactly yeah yeah uh, so within the Persona franchise, not that many people ha have the ability to say that they voice a the Bellroom character, yeah. uh, which you did with Theodore. Given that he is the male, or like, how you want to put it, like the brother counterpart to Elizabeth, what was your approach in voicing him? Yeah, you know, I, I actually wasn't the first actor to kind of establish Theodore. Yeah. Um, Travis Willingham uh, voiced him before I did. Uh, when I took over the role for Travis, I felt like I was just playing a mini version of him. He has a much, he's a much bigger guy than me, he's a yeah. much deeper voice than I do, so mine was like a mini version of what Travis had established for Theo. Um, but yeah, really, really cool to be part of that franchise, or another part of that franchise, and uh, Theo's such a great character. So, in the hit animated series, Miraculous Ladybug, you voice a particular black cat noir named Adrian Agrizet, right? <laughs> Adrian, yeah. Yeah. Adrian Agrizet. 
Yeah, so the show. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so the show. Is this I, a mashup with Rocky? Is that what you're <laughs> okay, so the show has had its great moments, and currently we're in a very crazy season of Miraculous. Where we're, we're, we're without putting any spoilers, by the way, for everybody out there. Um, things can go from the worst to say. <laughs> Anything you could tell us about when it comes to season five of Miraculous that you can give us at the moment? Um, well, uh, I don't know too much about where season five is going because we're still actively recording. Oh. And I'm not sure if you know this, but with Miraculous, we record out of order. So oh, it's not like episode so, so, one, so it's two, like three, like four, one, five. and then seven, and then six, or something like that? It's like three and 23, and then four oh. and 15, and like, and sometimes things happen and we're like, what is that? And we don't know. Hmm. So we just do the best we can. Um, I will say that season five might, might is lining up to be my favorite scene of the season. Oh. It's been really, really good. Uh, and also we, uh, we continue to sneak as many cat puns into the show. <laughs> That's what I've been uh, hearing, because I keep on hearing that every time of the lines and all. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we get to these moments at, that aren't in the script, and Ezra, the director, yeah. and I are like, I think this calls for a cat pun. <laughs> uh, so actually, one of my favorite that Ezra came up with relatively recently was just released. Uh, apparently, Cat Noir's favorite drink is cat cola. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I... I'm, I'm, sorry snuck the, in. I'm sorry for all the people who are like, the hate puns or something. <laughs> Too bad. They're going in the show. <laughs> you can't stop me. You get to collectively cringe while we just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no matter what, Paraclis is still a good show. Is that what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but there's some really good things that we've adjusted the script this season. Uh, I think there's one that's kind of a deep cut. And when people find it, they're going to be like, wait, what? And it's going to go viral. So Maybe. I'm hoping that that made it into the show. Show, and then someone discovers it. Okay. So it's it's gonna be good I, when it gets okay, out. That's there. awesome. Um, follow up on the question. Uh, were you anticipating any time throughout your time recording that Marionette were gonna confess to love to Adrian and vice versa? I hope they do. Uh, I ship the entire square. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for them to, to end up together in like 15 years. Because I love my job. You wanna keep it that yeah. long, yeah. Yeah. Right? Just keep it going. Just keep, keep it going. It going. Okay, Let cool. them get close Season and not figure it out. So the fans are just gonna be waiting until that time will happen, right? There we yeah. go. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, fans. <laughs> we will keep building up to some Cool. So, with so many iconic roles in your repertoire, um, how do you how do you decide what you take, or or do you just take as what comes at you? Uh, you know, it's not my choice all the time. Oh. What I'm able to audition for. Um, if I see something that I wouldn't want to play, I just won't read for something. Right. But it doesn't happen too often. Uh, the majority of roles that I'm able to audition for, like I would be excited to take on and awesome. play. Um, of course, there's only so many hours in the day, but I've been really fortunate to be able to manage my time well to accept everything that I'm able to accept. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I'm still very much auditioning, ongoing, um, and I tell people if you book one out of a hundred auditions as a voice actor, you're doing extremely well. Uh, sometimes what I book is higher than that, sometimes it's lower. It, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just buying lotto tickets every time I audition. Seriously, so I, I actually, um, as I was walking to my panel yesterday here at KomoriCon, I got an email that I had booked a new role. Um, and I felt this like adrenaline and excitement. Uh, even after all these years, you know, booking something still causes that to happen. Yeah. And that's what makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, that, I, that I have that excitement. Um, so. Yeah, can't wait for uh, to be back in the booth recording, and I, I'll, I'll be doing it again on Monday for quite some time. Awesome. Nice. nice. Uh, so my final question is, like what uh, Shiro Emiya says in Fate State at Unlimited Blade Works, yeah. do you believe that people die with the <laughs> <laughs> It's a very astute observation that Shiro has made. <laughs> you know what? It's actually not true when it comes to Shiro Emiya. <laughs> <laughs> because he has a hard time dying. With <laughs> <Yeah>. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>
and, and, and I've been very fortunate to play a lot of characters that don't follow that methodology. Every once in a while, my characters die when they are killed, but, but not all the time. And I hope uh, many of them continue to not die when they are killed. Just an easy guy simulator. There we go. Not that one. Nope, not that one. Exactly. <laughs> so where, where can people find you? Um, well, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Bryce Pappenbrook, and I uh, finally started a TikTok. Um, I was too late to get my name, so I'm real Bryce Pappenbrook. <laughs> uh, that's the one that's real. I uh, was one of your first thousand followers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Appreciate that. Well, I'm finally putting out some content. Awesome. I, I've been having a lot of fun. I think people are enjoying it, so I have some really fun ideas coming. Very so I cool. hope people find me there and enjoy what I'm creating. Awesome. All right. Well, thank awesome. you for your time, Bishop yeah. Pappenbrook. You have a wonderful rest of your Khan. Thank you all for listening, and you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you.